done with that one. On to the next one. Just Jamie. And done with that one too. Oh, sometimes it is just great to take a break from so text heavy books and go into something a little more colorful, a little more artistic, something like books with art. That's what this video is going to be all about. Any kind of books that have art. Hello everyone and welcome to another Book Talk with Talia. In today's episode we're going to be talking all about books that have art of some kind. So whether it's a full color graphic novel or a book with black and white illustrations or just a book that's filled with doodles, it's going to be in this video. But before I get into the books, don't forget to subscribe to the Shelf Stuff channel so you don't miss a single one of my book talks and make sure to hit the post notification bell so that you don't miss whenever I upload. And with that being said, let's get right into the books. One book that gives a colorful glimpse of middle school is New Kid by Jerry Craft. This book follows 12-year-old Jordan Banks who loves to draw and really wants to go to art school. Unfortunately, Jordan's mom is convinced that he needs to go to this fancy private school to get a good education. So even though Jordan tries to get his mom to let him go to art school, she's not convinced and he ends up having to go to the private school anyway. And it's pretty obvious from Jordan's first day at the school that he's one of just a few black kids in the entire grade. The book goes through Jordan's first year in the private school and even though things are okay and he doesn't have a lot of trouble making friends or anything, he's still struggling to fit in. It's a little hard for Jordan to fit in when he feels like he's a part of two different worlds. So the world that he grew up in and his new private school life where the kids are white and rich for the most part. His best friends from home probably wouldn't understand why Jordan would want to hang out with some new super rich white kids. Jordan doesn't know how to kind of put his old friends with his new friends and his old life with his new life. And this book is all in full color graphic novel style, so you get to see every part of Jordan's first year as the new kid in full color. And that was New Kid by Jerry Craft. One book that will make you want to try and publish your own notebook doodles is Frazzled Number no. 3 by Bookie Vivat. This is the third book in the Frazzled series and it once again follows middle schooler Abby Wu. Abby is feeling especially nervous this time around because she is going on a week-long trip to outdoor school. In outdoor school, all of Abby's class will be together in the wilderness. It's supposed to be a week where anything can happen, but Abby has to deal with her super popular older brother Peter coming on the trip as a chaperone. Despite having her brother on the trip, Abby is still super excited about going. Unfortunately, as soon as they arrive at the campsite, all the campers are split up by cabin and it turns out that Abby is going to be with three girls who are already friends that don't necessarily get along with her very well. Even though the three girls aren't mean to Abby, they're just not her best friends, so she feels like a total outsider in her cabin. Abby doesn't want outdoor school to go by feeling completely awkward, so after a pep talk from one of the counselors, she decides that she is going to be Abby 2.0. She's going to say yes to everything, she's going to be positive, and maybe if she's lucky, Abby 2.0 will even last outside of outdoor school. When it comes to how it looks, this book is in black and white, but there are illustrations on every page, so it's filled with art, and there's just sparse text throughout to kind of help the story along. And that was Frazzled Number no. 3 by Bookie Vivat. If you're looking for an illustrated book about friends, you might want to pick up Just Jamie by Terry Liebenson. So to start, this book does take place in the same universe as Invisible Emmy and Positively Izzy, but it's focused on two new main characters, Jamie and Maya, who you may have just seen in the background of the school in the other two books. So you do not need to read Invisible Emmy and Positively Izzy to get Just Jamie, but it doesn't hurt since they're all set in the same universe. So Jamie and Maya are best friends and they've been that way since they were little. As they've gotten older, they've kind of become a friend group with two other girls, Grace and Celia. But lately things have been a bit strained between Jamie and Maya. Jamie feels like everything she does just annoys Maya and Maya hasn't been acting quite as friendly as she used to. Now it's the last day of seventh grade and Jamie can already tell that Maya is annoyed with her. She just wants their friendship to go back to normal, so she decides that on the bus, she's going to ask her what's wrong and see if she can fix things. 
Of course, Maya ends up just getting more mad at Jamie when she confronts her on the bus, so it doesn't really solve anything. From there, we learn Maya is actually being pressured by the two other girls in the group, Grace and Celia, to stop being friends with Jamie. Basically, they think Jamie's kind of babyish. She still likes to watch Disney movies. She's not really interested in boys and makeup like they are, and they just think that the friendship has run its course. Since Maya is closest with Jamie, Grace and Celia think that it should be Maya's job to tell Jamie they don't want to be friends anymore. I don't want to spoil too much, but Maya ends up doing something that completely severs the relationship between Jamie and the other girls. The rest of the book kind of goes through the aftermath of that, how they deal with it on the last day of school, and whether their friendship can be saved. And in classic Terry Liebenson style, this book also has a twist ending. This book is in full color, and Jamie's part of the story is told in kind of like a notebook style with handwritten font, and Maya's part of the story is told in comic strip style. And that was Just Jamie by Terry Liebenson. One book that is perfect for fantasy lovers is Wings of Fire Number 1, the graphic novel by Tui T. Sutherland and illustrated by Mike Holmes. This book starts with a group of dragons who are set on fulfilling a prophecy that may end their war. The group has gathered five different dragon eggs that they believe will hatch into five dragonets that can fulfill the prophecy. Once they hatch, the five dragonets are raised in a hidden cave underneath a mountain. They know that their destiny is to end the war, like the prophecy says but they've all become pretty close friends even though they're different. When one of the dragonets is threatened, all five decide to spring into action and leave the mountain. This is their chance to take their destiny and put it into their own hands. So this is the first book in the series and it mostly focuses on the mudwing dragonette Clay while the other books in the series focus on some of the other dragonets. And if this book sounds a little bit familiar to you, that's because it is initially a text series so they actually adapted it for a graphic novel. It's absolutely perfect that this book is a graphic novel now because it's just so much more fun to see full color dragons flying around instead of imagining it in your head. And that was Wings of Fire number one, the graphic novel by Tui T. Sutherland and illustrated by Mike Holmes. If you've always wondered what it might be like to grow up in a different time period, you might want to check out Short and Skinny by Mark Tatuli. This book takes place in 1977 when aspiring cartoonist Mark is so tired of being short and skinny. Mark hates how he feels like he's less than the other guys in his school because of his size. Even his gym teacher can tell that his confidence is lacking. In a final attempt to change his size, Mark orders a bodybuilding kit that was advertised in the back of one of his comic books. Mark is just really hoping that the bodybuilding kit will help him become totally buff before the beginning of 8th grade. If that were to happen, he might have just enough confidence to talk to his crush, Lisa. But before he can get to 8th grade, Mark has to go through the summer of 1977. Because it's summer, Mark is stuck doing swim team races and going to the beach, taking his shirt off, all stuff that he hates being short and skinny. Luckily for Mark, there is one amazing thing to come out of the summer, and that is the first Star Wars movie. Star Wars completely inspires Mark to start a project that he will obsess over for the rest of the summer. And as fun as the book sounds, it also looks great and is in full color comic panel style. And that was Short and Skinny by Mark Tatuli. If you want a new spin on a classic novel, you should check out the To Kill a Mockingbird graphic novel that was illustrated and adapted by Fred Fordham and originally written by Harper Lee. So, of course, this graphic novel is an adaptation of the original book that was published in 1960. But it still tells the same story of Scout Finch, her brother Jem, and her father Atticus. This book takes place in the South during the Great Depression, and it starts during the summer when Scout and Jem become friends with a new boy named Dill who comes to live with his aunt for the summer. Scout, Jem, and Dill become fast friends and they hang out every day. They're also really interested in this one house on their street called the Radley Place. To them, the house has almost a haunted quality because there's a man who lives inside named Boo Radley who hasn't left the house since he was a teenager. No one really knows why Boo Radley stays inside all the time, so it's a big mystery. Overall, even though it's the Great Depression and a lot of families aren't doing so well in the South, the Finch family is doing okay. Jem and Scout's dad, Atticus, is actually a lawyer. But when Atticus, who is white, decides to defend a local black man in a court case, Scout and Jem end up seeing racism firsthand. 
The court case and what happens after really push Scout, Jem, and Dill to look at their neighborhood differently. The court case really opens their eyes to prejudice, hate, and racism in their own community. So this is a full color graphic novel, and there isn't really that much text throughout, even though it's adapted from a full text novel. You still get the same story. This book just reads like a regular comic or graphic novel, so it's absolutely perfect for those of you who have to read the book for school, or if you loved the book and you just want to get a different spin on it. And that was the To Kill a Mockingbird graphic novel, adapted and illustrated by Fred Fordham, and originally written by Harper Lee. So those are all of the artistic books that I have for you today, but as always, make sure to leave a comment in the section down below if you have any other graphic novels that you are loving right now. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Shelf Stuff channel so you don't miss a single one of my videos, and hit that post notification bell so you are always notified whenever we post. I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.